Hey everyone, it's Joe Zason Irfan here from the Automator. And today, well, last week or two, maybe it's two weeks ago now, we covered using Copilot and how amazing, phenomenal it is. Well, a couple of days ago, I said, "Hey, you know what? This is so amazing. I, I'm more than happy to have the Automator pay for Copilot for these two guys because um, it'll really speed up our code developments, which saves our clients time and money. So, um, besides, gets our scripts done faster. So, um, we we got that done now." Isaiah is going to help Irfan kind of jump through the first couple steps and show what, what he loves most about it. So just thought you guys might want to watch this and see, you know, some of the big benefits of it and have a little handholding. Hope you enjoy it. All right. So if you go to uh, VS Code, um, so all right. So if we go to the extensions uh, manager in uh, VS Code, you just look for Copilot. And of course, you're going to get a lot of them like, you know, uh, Copilot theme, Copilot voice, and so on, ChatGPT, Copilot. There's a lot of extensions out there. I am using one, the one from GitHub. Now, there's a few things for it. Um, this particular Copilot is made by Microsoft, which owns both VS Code and GitHub. And this Copilot is also reading code from the GitHub repository. Some people don't like that, um, but in the end, it means that it has more data to be trained on. And it makes it a little bit um, better at predicting certain types of things. Now, we have been saying that these um, these extension or Git uh, ChatGPT really doesn't understand Auto Hotkey V two really, but you will see what happens when I start feeding it information on my scripts. So if you go ahead and install the Copilot chat, it will automatically install the Copilot because the Copilot chat cannot work without the Copilot. But you can install Copilot by itself. And, then, and I think I explained before what the difference is. One of them predicts code as you type. It's kind of like an intelligence. Just you typing on your code, it tries to give you suggestions as, as to what to write. But the Copilot chat, though, is just like a chat that you have on the right side. And uh, well, it, it is kind of like a window that you can chat to ChatGPT, but that ChatGPT is trained specifically with code. If you try to give it questions that are not related to code, it will actually say, hey, I, I cannot do this, it's just for coding. So those are the two things, you just install them. The extension settings are pretty straightforward. There's nothing much you can change, just the language, uh, whether you want to show a welcome message every time you open the chat or not, uh, code actions and iterative fixing. Those two options, um, I will not go too deep into them, uh, but for example, code actions, you can select code and then when you right click on it, it gives you, uh, Copilot chat gives you a few options of things that you can do straight into the code without you having to go to the chat. That's basically sort of what it does. This one only suggests stuff. And you will see it in a second what that looks like. But the settings, again, the only thing that you can do here is show the inline completions. That, that's just the, you enable or disable the extension. And which languages you want to disable that for. So if you're in plain text, you don't want that auto-suggest thing because it's not code, for example. Things like that. So it doesn't really, you can determine where that thing works and so on. But those are the only settings. There's nothing else you can do. But now let me show you what it looks like in action. So right here, we start with a blank script. And this is the problem. As I mentioned, it doesn't really understand how to hot key too. So right now, the suggestions that it might give me are totally wrong. But as you continue typing, it will get better and better at suggestions. So let's do this. Let's let's just have uh, you create a function that says insert 
um, ID. Well, there you go. To get work, let's let's go with that. Get forward. Now, the way how this one is going to work is that first is going to check for the parameters. So let's say that these are my IDs. And the first thing that I want to do is um, I'm going to check that that is an array. So if type of IDs is not equals to arrays, oh, there you go. I tried it. Then I want to throw an error. Throw. Still, all the things that it's giving me are not V2. This is not V2 code. Um, you cannot use the exception like that. I don't care about it. At the beginning, it's going to be like that. ID must be erased. And then for ID in IDs, then I want to not do that. That's not going to work for me. Oh, working. Sometimes you see that it kind of like suggests something. If you press tab, it just goes ahead and put it. Um, if you don't want the suggestion, you have to hit escape before hitting tab. That's a little bit annoying sometimes, but yeah, I don't care. I would say, uh, let me clear the clipboard, clip a clipboard. Again, all the suggestions are wrong. And then a clipboard. Well, this one was good. I'm going to append the ID to the clipboard like that. That's cool. Now let's go with the next function. And this is the interesting part that it will now grab this guy as a template for the next one. So delete IDs from clipboard, or at least that's what I'm waiting. Okay, so let's go ahead and do IDs. And let's go for if, oh, there you go. It is already telling me, it is already giving me some suggestions. Now, at this point, the suggestion is really bad, but it started with the right thing. You see this part right here? That is what I was gonna do. So if types ID, right? Now I get what I wanted. This is not really what I want to do. If the ID is not an array, it is already starting to suggest stuff that is a little bit closer to what I'm doing. And as I continue doing that, you will see what happens. So at this point, I want to have IDs. So current IDs equals string split. That's exactly what I was going to do. How does it know? I don't know. But it was. It, it says, you know what? Because it's looking what I did before. I had IDs separated by new lines. And as, say, as I say current IDs, it automatically grabbed the code at the top and said, okay, so the next closest thing that you should do would be string split it, but check this out. Remember that it is looking at V1. ChatGPT knows a lot of V1 code, but as it is looking that I have been putting a clipboard in certain places, the next suggestion was not the V1 way of doing the clipboard. It gave me the two, the V2 way. I don't know if you noticed that, but this A here clipboard, the first time I started talk, um, talking about the clipboard, it gave me clipboard by itself, which is what V1 does. And actually you can see it here, down here, clipboard. But now it suggests that V2 code. It's not because it's understanding the V2 code, it's because it's grabbing the context and actually giving you what to, to do. Now, if now I have the current IDs, I have a list of IDs. So what I want to do is go through this loop and remove it from this guy. So I have to do two loops. I would say for ID in IDs. Oh, look at that. It's already doing something. This is not auto hotkey code. This is actually JavaScript. I don't care about that, so I hit escape. Now I start with this, and now I say, hold on. Um, now for current IDs in, sorry, for current ID in current IDs, ooh, there you go. Now it is suggesting what to do. So it's telling me, 
okay, go ahead and compare the two, which is basically what I was going to do. And if they're true, remove that ID. That's this right. code right here is not 100% good. Sorry? Uh, that's very cool. <laughs> I was saying. Right. That. Right. Okay. So now it is now I'm comparing. It knows that I'm going to remove something and I will try to remove it. Now I have to fix this code a little bit. Um, I don't have to break here, but as you can see, it is already giving me good suggestions. I have to fix that a little bit. Um, I yeah, you you have here. To I just break. have to do a index. You have to break um, it. I think. Sorry. You have Sorry? to break in. You have to break uh, at line twenty six if it is match. Okay. Oh, right. Because then I need, uh, then I will continue with the other one. Yes. Yeah. I understand. You see, so sometimes <laughs> the so, so yeah, so that sometimes the AI knows a little bit better of what I'm trying to do. Sometimes I, I have noticed that, like, oh shoot, she was right. Now, well, especially okay, maybe so, if you had had another one of those examples somewhere in your code. Right. It, right. It, it, so it now we been. have already an example in there. So now that I finished doing that, so that's the current IDs. Now I want to grab all that and put it on the clipboard again. So I will just uh, for current ID and current IDs. Oh, it knows what I was going to do. There you go. And I have to make sure that the clipboard is empty before I do that. A clipboard. There you go. Cool. So as you can see, I spent less time writing the code than actually thinking about the problem. Now, when I go ahead and try and make another function, it will grab from those two examples. Does that make sense? And that is the thing. The more you type, the better it gets at predicting because it's using this as a context. So as I go ahead and say clear, Flipboard, oops, again, it is now suggesting V2 code. That is because of the examples, um, default IDs to Flipboard, let's say that. And sometimes, and this is where I'm gonna show you now, um, you can write the name of the function, okay? And you can select it, can select it. And here at the bottom, what you're looking at is the copilot suggesting stuff. But you can select the code, right click on it, and now you have um, some options. Let me see, copilot here. And you can either explain it, fix it, generate documentation, generate texts. You see what I mean? So these are the codes that I was telling you about that you can um, use on a given function. For example, I can select this one here. I go ahead and go to Copilot and say, generate the documentation on that. There you go. And I say, accept. And this is a function that removes specified IDs from the clipboard content. It gives you the parameters. It tells you what the exception is. So I didn't have to spend time in the documentation. This is one of the, the best that I would say that I use it for not really coding that much or solving certain problems um, because I usually go in knowing what I'm trying to do. I just take suggestions from her. And now here's the other thing. I just tell it, document this function and I don't have to spend time documenting every single, in, every single thing that I um, want to do with it. But here's the cool part. I created a template like this because I like my documentation in a certain way, for example, like this. And I can just select the function and the documentation. And now I can tell it to fill in that template that I have there. So I want you to put the description in that location. I want you to look for a URL for the documentation if you have one. I want you to uh, tell me about the class if it is inside a class. Tell me about the parameters and the return types, you see? And here's where 
the chat window comes into play. I just open the chat window, I have it in here. You can put that everywhere you want. You can move it into the right side or the left side, however you prefer. I like having it here. And now I can say, hey, um, fill in the uh, comment template based on the function. Don't explain. For example, and it would try to do that. It's not always 100% what I'm expecting, but this is cool. It just did it. Oh. Now, interestingly enough, now that I have it selected, there's a button here of inserting that where the cursor is at, and that just replaces my stuff, and you're good to go. <laughs> you see? So, <laughs> Notice that it tried to give you the documentation for string split. Eh, that's cool. I could put that in, or I can change that URL to whatever I want. Um, of course, this is not a member of AutoHotKey. Well, it might be. The parameter is an array of IDs. The handling is a string that has been thrown, okay? And it doesn't return anything, you see? So it is so cool that I can just focus on doing that and just so you know, I could also say generate this function. So I select just the name of the function here, and I tell it to generate it, and it probably will give me some code. Um, and look at that. Now it's following the pattern. Now it's giving me a documentation, and it is giving me some code. And I can just go ahead and insert that in and now I see if that's what I wanted. Oh, the IDs, I just want them differently. And there you go. I already have the default IDs to clipboard. <laughs> you see what I mean? Uh, so this is something that again, it saves you tons of time, especially if what you're doing is repetitive. At this point, I this particular part of the code is kind of like it follows a pattern. So if I go down here and try to do something that um, has some repetitive patterns like that, it would be really good at predicting that and just putting the suggestion for you in a way that it is, you don't have to type it, especially yeah. that's the point. I don't want to type that. They're clearly, weighting your your local data higher so it's borrowing from what you've already done much more than yes extra stuff, right Which, look at that especially for us in auto hotkey since it doesn't really know auto hotkey it's getting there um that's really really helpful and i can show you that in a different way like let's say for example the deer select deer select is a function that does not exist in auto hotkey v1 okay so this this function doesn't exist so, and you can see that by looking at below here, that it is giving me very bad syntax for it. This is not good. So let's go ahead and say, uh, save file on directory on, so, so save file, let's say that. It already tells me more or less what it would do. Okay, I, will don't, I don't want to do that. I do the file path. And then I would say, the first thing you're gonna do, parent directory, is deer select and that I will keep it like that. I'm not gonna have any options. Starting folder is gonna be a script there. Oops, a script there. And then no options. And then the then I get the um the prompt. Now it suggested a number there. I don't want it. I just keep it the prompt. Cool. Let's just go ahead and do this. Um, I told it how to use the deer select, okay? And now, um, okay, if parent deer is empty, I would say deer create, and I want to do, um, no, in this case, it, it, if you didn't select anything, I should return. And so she was right. And if doesn't exist, then, well, it should exist, you selected one, and then I will 
uh, file move or file copy, um, or not file append, no file copy. We're gonna do that. Almost there. This is the wrong syntax. That's okay. I will just remove the percent signs. Cool. Now let's go ahead and say delete file uh, directory. Now I'm going to do this. And instead of doing that, let's do this. Parent directory. Whoops. There you go. It now is suggesting v2 code. At the beginning, it was giving me v1 code, right? But now, as it looked at what I did above, now its suggestion is technically V2, even though she doesn't understand V2 at all. So as soon as you type stuff, she's grabbing what you type, is grabbing the, the, the context of it, and is suggesting stuff. And if you give it other um, options, like how to use it, like this, to delete the file from files from. Now the next suggestion is going to come in, um, yeah, by themselves. Now file delete or dear delete, I think. Then I'm going to have parent directory. All right. Cool. Is there, have you seen if you have an include, would it be borrowing from that also? Mm, no, it, I don't think it does that right now, especially for our hockey. I don't know if it would do it for others, but for example, if I include here my, uh, let's say, V2. Um, Maybe let's choose our notify class and then try to use notify and see if it offers up. Yeah, OK, so let me get the location kind of step out S drive well. library. Notify. Here we go. Okay. They knew that I was going to do something similar to that. So notify V2. You can see that she gets very close to the suggestions. But now, oops. From there, I told it about that. Let's see what it does if I try to use the notify class. Now, it gives me some suggestions, but it's not good. Uh, if I remember right, you, this is not how you use it because the the the. But it is trying. It is tr as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It is reading the code from GitHub repositories. So, if somebody has something about notification, and that's how they use it, it will try to give you that as a suggestion. I'm not going to use it because that is not how it works. Hold on, notify. Then I will tell it is show. Now that I said show, it is giving me a little bit better of a suggestion. Not exactly, but let's go there. And now, if I type that in here, notice that she's already suggesting that correctly. Now the next suggestion it's totally fine. Does that make sense? So, so, so it just it, it doesn't need much to start predicting, is what I'm saying. And if I gave it um, a a uh, an example using the headers, like for example, uh, uh, what is it? Body is it text? What is the parameter for the text? BD what? Like this, is that how it is? Erfan, I think you're muted. Uh, it's it's BD text, sorry, I was. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so BD text, I, I make it like this. The next time it suggests me, notice that it is doing that, you see? So it is already now understanding, hey, this is how you use it. So it learns extremely fast. And that's the reason why I uh, mentioned, even though it doesn't really understand AutoHotKey V2, as soon as you type a little bit of the commands, it will really technically write V2 code. So this is insanely 
powerful and especially with repetitive code and it gives really good suggestions and sometimes if you're not thinking well enough it would happen as just happened to me hey i have to break here she already had the code she knows that that's what it's supposed to happen even if i'm not thinking that <laughs> you see because i was thinking something else i was thinking that it was going to break from this loop um Sorry, I, I thought that it was going to be breaking from this loop, and no, she understands that it is from this loop, right? Mm -hmm. So, sorry, I, I had to step out. Did it reckon? Did it? If you include like the notify or whatever, did it start borrowing from it? No, not at all. Um, uh, but as soon as I wrote the first one like this, yeah. Now, no. when I type the first, the, the next part, it will suggest correctly. Yeah based well, on what I typed, but not, right, the, not, 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 not the first the first try, time. Try, try open the notify into the next tab and then see on this script it will suggest or not. It's a good idea. It, it's worth a try. Yeah, I, I got your point. If the file's open, it might be different if it's actively yeah. open than if it's just using an ink. Oh, you mean like opening the, the actual? Yeah, yeah, actual library. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm just so notify dot, and I get nothing. I, I, it's not about the opened files. It's about the even though that might change in the future. No. It is about the code that is in this file. In this, I'm context. just really surprised it doesn't follow the include because that to me is. Uh, it might do it for the, for other languages. Yeah, fair enough. Right, right. It might do it for other languages, even though I'm not really one hundred percent sure about that. What I was but, going to yeah. say, which which we need to do anyway, is we need to scrape the auto hotkey help documentation file and have that mm -hmm. as content that we're going to use in our chat bot for the automator. Right, mm. but if we could scrape that, especially with the examples and stuff, and actually have that in a file here somewhere it probably would start offering up v2 code very well but but i don't want it i don't i don't know i wouldn't want it in that active file that sucks what i would like it to do though is you see here on the um intellisense you see that it suggests the the parameters that you can pass right if the chat gpt would read that intellisense it would give you more um it would give you better suggestions, but yeah. it's not reading that IntelliSense window. So yeah. that is something that I would say, oh, but it, okay. Yeah. And at some point we'll be able to it either will automatically or we can trick it to, right? Um, and, and that's yeah. just where I was going with that. Like right now we can put stuff like that in the file, even though it'd be stupid. Look at this, look at this. I open a bracket, it gave me the title, the text, the icon, the duration, the position. On so it took that from somewhere. Do the BD I don't text. know where it took that from. No, I know that it's wrong, but it's closer to what I was expecting yeah. because I don't have any code in this file. There is duration, position, it. and sound. <laughs> right. Those are those are interesting. So somehow it is grabbing something from somewhere. <laughs> and it is not that, from this I file, know. right? Well, the, the other yeah. thing is. This is where I'm a little hazy on it, right? Yeah, there, uh, there, there is a location notify V which is used in the library. Oh, look at the three. You see the three ticks here? That probably is from one of the examples. So if I go to the examples, you see, <laughs> no, it's not there. I don't know where it's reading it from, though. Just, just do the BD text. BD title, oh. BD icon. <laughs> BD you icon. See that? Yeah. It, it, it is grabbing what I wrote and trying to make a pattern out of that. See what I mean? So it's just, I'm telling you, it's extremely good at predicting stuff based on very little information. So from there, I can just hit tab and say, well, the icon doesn't yet go with the, yeah. And the time, a, I would say, is duration. It's a, yeah, it's a duration. And, and now my icon is correct. And I can, yeah. 
But, but, but you see, I, I didn't have to modify too much of it. Like the suggestion was close enough for me to just modify to little things and that's it. When you're working with this, this is where I'm I was kind of fuzzy on it, is is are, are some of these files are in Git and some aren't. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, some are in when you say Git, Git, are you talking about GitHub? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, on the, um, the verb, yes. yeah. Right. But so I was just thinking, is that a factor? Because this is copilot through GitHub. Yes, right? that, that's that's basically. And might that be another thing? Like, if you had that file locally, it may not help. But what if it was actually in your repository? That's a very good question. I would assume so. People are complaining about it. Um, that ChatGPT is suggesting code from uh, licensed programs uh -huh. in GitHub. And well, but I mean that. more about your own, you know. Um, no, no, I understand. But, but what I'm saying is, as they're complaining about that, I yeah, would assume right. I that, yes, right. that this thing is actually clearly grabbing text from, from yeah, it is, it's clearly grabbing it from the GitHub, the GitHub repositories. They should be waiting it more within your own repository. And if not, they will. Right. Because it clearly, not for is a more, a better predictor. Um, the other thing I was just curious in, in this, when you right clicked before, um, I thought I saw uh, um, all right let's see so I select that right click on it what, what is the refactor down below now that's not under copilot so that's I'm just curious no. so some languages allow you to quickly refactor code so you select some code uh, and this is something that um, you and I, we have been talking about it, it's just making it easy for us, is as soon as I start noticing that some code is repeating itself, I want to create a function out of it, right? So the refactor, you select that code, click on refactor, and it would copy that into its own file, grab a function name, and then you include that's it automatically. Has that, yeah. That's, right, that's, so, so okay. it is a... It just, it is, it just I, the, to me, I would have thought that at some point that'll be under Copilot as well, where it actually tries to optimize your code. You know, that's a good that's a good question. So right now, you could try and say, "Hold on, let me grab this guy and say, um, right here." I select that and say, uh, either in Copilot or on my chat, I say, um, "Optimize this code." and see what it does. Now, there's a difference between in chat, uh, inline chat, or on the right side. The inline chat is giving you the suggestion, you see it, and it's comparing it to what you have on the left. So you have a comparison That's of really interesting. what you had and what the suggestion is, and you can accept the suggestion or discard it, right. okay? So this is something that it is um, it is interesting, but allow me just one second. So it gives you the preview of what your your code is going to look like if you do that, and you can accept or discard that. That's what you can do, or regenerate the response, or make a different suggestion. Whatever you want, you can give feedback right there. We're gonna discard that. But in the chat, you select that, and you go ahead and say, um, optimize that code, and it would just give you its opinion right here. You see, it just says, hey, the code you provided is already quite optimized. However, there are a few minor things that you want to include. That's it, nothing else. So notice that the, the optimization that happened here is not the same as the one that you were looking at in the inline code. It's a little bit different. Um, but let me see. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually, I have told you this one, Irfan, and, and, and even the computer agrees. You see that you have an if statement and everything is inside the brackets. The computer thinks, hey, just grab all this code, put it outside of the brackets, 
And if the if statement is false, just continue. You remember that? That I have told you that is is better to do that? That's the suggestion that she's making right here. It should just say, hey, if it doesn't really is if it is not what you expect, just ignore it. That's because it is a more it is easier to read. That's what happens. But you see that the suggestions work a little bit differently if you're in the chat, in the GitHub Copilot chat versus the inline code that you select and say, hey, um, start inline chat and do that, for example. So that is kind of like a quick overview of how it works, um, how you can use it. Basically, just remember, at least with our hot QB2, it doesn't really have enough data on it, but as soon as you start typing and giving it a few examples, it is it gets really, really good at it. If I'm right here in this spot in this um code right now, right? Then if I start a new function in here, um it will give me very good suggestions. Because the examples it has right here is, is really good. Yeah. Up to the top of this file. Comment. You use your box comments to comment out everything beneath it. And now go back to the top and try to start typing something that is in there that you think it would have assisted on. All right. Yeah, sure. Let's do the... Um... Not the notify class, let me see. Very simple function. Uh, let's do the this part. So for argument in a args if here we go, it already knows what to suggest so, based on the comment. So the so good then I can continue is yeah. even though it'd be annoying, the, the idea I had about bringing in all the documentation, whatever. You could bring it in and just comment it out, right? And just have it in exactly. that local file. It's a no. I I would hate that. At the same time, I totally see the but benefit. Then, of like Jesus, like now you have V two stuff. Now, now, Irfan, because I I don't think you, Joe, you were here when we started. Do you remember when this file was totally empty? Did you see how fast this thing got the suggestions right? We just had like two lines, three lines, and he was starting to suggest V2 yeah. code. But but Isaiah, that has to do with the things that you were doing were things you had already done before. Anytime I think you start a whole new area where you have, you're doing something that's not something you've already done, it, it wouldn't be as good at offering up suge accurate suggestions, right? Because it's- Yeah, that, that, that's the part that you missed. Like, uh, yeah, we started this file, totally blank. And as soon as I started the second function, it was already doing everything right. It was very yeah, weird. That's, that's not that's not at all what I'm talking. You, you're you working with the clipboard. It looks like you're doing similar things. Okay. Oh, but, but for example, if I now start with a totally new function, yeah, it will be a little bit bad at the beginning. Right. And then after I write a few well, it has lines, the, yeah, of that, exactly. And then it will borrow from it. But yes, that's, that's my correct. point is if we bring in examples of all, a whole variety of things and have it commented out, it, it'll skip that, possibly skip that first step, right? Right. Uh, so if I say create main GUI, right, right now it's going to give me very bad right. information about it. Exactly. Now I start with main GUI and I tell it main dot add text. So I have to, the first steps, right. um, do it myself with right. 600, height 20, um, and then this is okay. And then main dot add button. Now this second suggestion, it's weird because I haven't told it. I haven't. I don't have GUI code up here. It doesn't know about V2, but it followed the pattern that if I say add text, then the next one should be add button or something similar. So, and this is what I was trying to get at. I don't know how to explain how fast it knows what to do. Yeah, I, now, I when I create a new one, then yeah, create um, copy GUI. Now the next one is going to be, I didn't have to write that, you see? So it is, it, I am really amazed at how fast it learns. Now, granted, if you have 
the comment there with the documentation. It would do this way better, way faster. That's like right. you don't have to even do the first one. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 your point. Like if you have a comment down here with some examples of what GUIs look like. And, and this is the other thing. I wouldn't bring the whole documentation. You just need some examples of but very I, I basic would, stuff. How you create arrays. I, yeah, but if we can automate grabbing the whole documentation and its examples, who cares? Yeah. The, my, my also because we're going to use that same file for our bot on the automator, right? As a way to help people. Yeah. Like, yeah. So we're already creating the file. Is the point? I anyway. Well, you know, we'll check it out. We'll try it. Right. It, it's just. Yeah. I, I would love to. We we all thought ChatGPT would be writing V two code by now, and it's sort of getting closer. It definitely from the ChatGPT when you're in the code itself, Copilot's a little different. I know that. And also, I don't know if you've seen like Microsoft has their own Copilot thing that they're bringing in everywhere um, in, in a lot of different ways. It's, it's very powerful and very similar, but um, just in so many ways. But if we can still speed up that process and, and help us and other people write fat code even faster, why not? That's correct. Right. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Like I said, we, what what are we paying? Do you remember? Was it ten bucks a month ish? I think. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. So it's it's not a crazy price. It's quite reasonable, especially when someone else pays it for you. But um, <laughs> you guys enjoyed that. Like the video if you learned something. It really helps us out. Um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Release videos now. We're releasing them at least like three a week for a while because we're backed up in how many videos we got. Uh, hope to see you soon. Cheers. Bye.